beta, this is um, showing a coronal mass ejection. Okay? First you see the solar wind, but then you see this increased uh, particle density, and that's the coronal mass ejection, the writing on the back of the solar wind. So there's the cloud, there's the coronal mass ejection over there. You see it coming. Right. And you're going to start to see the particle density go up very quickly. And so what's with the drop in particle density right before it? So mm -hmm. Oh, it drops whoa. Out. Yeah. Look at that. So, you know, a great portion of this energy is deflected by a magnetic field. But what really happens, here's another, another thing that's, that's often um, uh, talked about incorrectly in, 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 in the news. When those particles come in, those particles directly are not directly what's causing the aurora. The particle is hitting. Uh, what it is is that process is stretching the magnetosphere. So the magnetosphere looks like a kind of a tear shape. Mm -hmm. um, the tail of the magnetosphere is is pulled and stretched and snaps in much the same way that the solar flare magnetic energy is released. This is a process that the scientists call reconnection. When that snap happens energy then pours back from the tail into the, the poles, and that is what causes the aurora oh, boreal. Okay. So it's the snapping uh, it's of the the snapping of that releasing energy. Okay. And these guys actually have some animations showing that. 